Hey everybody, welcome back to Chatters DIY. On today's uh, video we're going to be redecorating the hall stairs and landing. So those of you that follow and subscribe the channel will obviously know that I've done the loft. As part of doing the loft um, and the fire regulations we have to update all the doors in the hall and the landing to create a fire escape corridor. Um, also because of the damage that we had to do to the uh, to fit the staircase into the loft we had to have the landing area plastered um, so that needed decorating anyway uh, so as a result we need to do the hall because it's all connected obviously we want it all to match so there's quite a few things that we're going to be doing um, again I'm doing it in a way that is going to be cost effective so um, if you see anything that you think oh, we maybe could have done this that and the other I've probably made the decision to do it a certain way to keep the costs down so I'll um, I'll just have a walk through now and show you what I've done so far uh, at the moment we should be able to sort of show you why I've done things and how I've done things without having to film every last detail so at the moment the hall looks like this obviously the, um, the electrics are off at the moment because you can see I'm installing some spotlights um, the walls are covered in this you can see on there look it's really rough um, grit on the walls and it's called blue grit uh, basically it's for increased adhesion for if you're going to have um, a plastering skim over the top of an old uh, an old plastered wall uh, so to start with I had to take all the paper off all this was really old wallpaper had been on for years and I had an amazing um, experience where this entire wall came off in one full piece of uh, paper which I think I've still got a photograph of uh, and so that was really uh, that I, I put that on social media and uh, that got a lot of um, comments and, uh, and reactions to that I then obviously painted this uh, blue grit and used um, scrim tape to cover any cracks obviously because the, the property is quite old there were quite a few cracks underneath the wallpaper that only um, hairline nothing um, to worry about too much so I've just put all the scrim tape on gone over the top of it with the blue grit and it's got this really rough really good surface now to for the uh, for the plaster to come and skim over we decided to go with uh, spotlights so don't worry about the way that it looks at the moment all these holes are all um, either access to the to the cabling that was already there or what we call mousy holes um, just to sort of feed the wire through one side of a joist into through the other um, this is where the original ceiling rose was and I've got the connection up there it then runs to actually what I'll do I'll explain the uh, the layout just here and then here we've got joists and there and that was an important thing first doing some exploratory uh, holes just to find where the joists actually were and then you can sort of dig out the holes either side of it so I've come from the main light connection through this joist and through that joist to number one number one spotlight there I've then got the cable that runs from number one to number two and remember this the, the joists run this direction so there was nothing to go through there I've gone into number two out of number two back around here back through the original holes that I've already done and through this joist into number three out of number three into number four again no holes required because of the joist running in that direction and from number four back around this corner through this joist through this joist and then from there onwards uh, the carpet's been changed so I've uh, rolled the carpet up there look and exposed the floorboards Uh, 
and you might think wow that's a, a mishmash of wiring but once you work out which one's which uh, it's not too bad the cable then that was running to the other light downstairs the other ceiling rows in the hallway comes through these joists and it's this one here and then it comes around this corner and out there for the uh, for the last spotlight whereas it was originally there these um, these boards can go back down again now like so obviously they'll get screwed down but that's all the electric um, alterations completed if you're interested in installing spotlights the one thing that I would recommend is work out where they're going to go obviously and then work out where the joists are because you will be dictated by where the joists are with the ceiling rows you want to screw the the actual uh, connection of the rows into the into a joist preferably but it's the opposite with a spotlight you have to miss the joist because obviously the spotlight goes into the the, the sort of the space above the ceiling so if there's a joist there you obviously you can't fit it there it's in the way so if you see some extra lines and stuff and scribbles on the wall that's because i originally wanted them to go certain places and then found that i couldn't um i've ended up coming to uh, some sort of compromise and going obviously you want them in a nice grid pattern and i've got an equal distance now between these um they're an equal distance from the walls they're halfway down or halfway across this hallway section and the only difference is this one where uh, i've had to come about four inches closer to this spotlight just to fit just to miss the uh, the joist all the others are bang on the other thing i've done is obviously remove what was a really really big radiator off this wall a really old-fashioned one we're keeping it because it's really obviously kicks out a lot of heat and does a very good job of um, in the sort of through the spine of the house but I didn't want it on at all whilst I was decorating so the pipe work comes down this corner and then it spurs off in two directions one into the living room and supplies the living room radiator but then I there's a drain point on the what that was normally over here so I've created just a little bit of push fit um, connections just to keep the drain point on I'm going to be bo um, having this boiler service soon so I wanted to be able to redrain it again and obviously when I put reconnect it it'll all need to be drained so the drain points there and then I've just sort of bypassed the old radiator without uh, creating too much work so that's worked out quite nicely that was all made out of little bits and bobs that I've got left over from doing the loft anyway and uh, yeah so far the spotlights are going to cost £40 for six um, they're 240 volt um, lights anyway so they just run straight off the uh, normal lighting circuit and my circuit is uh, RCD protected so it's all compliant with modern regulations so uh, i can do a quite an easy direct replacement they're not low voltage so they don't need any sort of transformers or anything so we can see now that i've installed the spotlights as i said before um these holes are just for, for access really uh, and what i'm after it's a smaller hole when I've done the reboarding. Uh, it's a 70 mil, 72 mil hole for these spotlights, and then they'll uh, this will give clearance then for the for the spring loaded attachments to uh, to grip the new boards. So the spotlights are in. They're not uh, the ceilings, not been uh, reboarded as you can tell, but. All the wiring's done, spotlights are all working, and um, I'm really happy with how bright the room is now. Um, it's always one thing you, you never know until you've done it. 
and I'm quite happy with that. It gives me a good impression um, of what it's going to be when it's completed. The walls uh, that we're going to be painting are going to be quite a dark blue, so um, it's good to see that actually that ain't going to be too detrimental. Um, I've not boarded the ceiling yet because I haven't got a date for the plaster uh, and because of the way that I like to cut the holes out for the spotlights, the finished holes, I like to do that after the plastering and if you can't leave big holes for the plaster to try and work around so what I'm hoping is I'll get a couple of days notice uh, that he's going to be coming around to do it and then I'll just throw them up in preparation for him. Otherwise I'll be stuck without any lights in the hallway until he uh, manages to fit me in. So watch this space. The other thing that I've managed to do is take advantage of the fact that we've got all this work going on and I've built under the stairs in this cupboard. I've utilised the very bottom section to make a little bedroom for the dog. So, it looks a bit small, I don't know whether you can tell the size of it in there, but it's absolutely plenty big enough. Um, it's only She's only a little beagle, so I wonder if she'll come and show you. Puppy! Come here, come here. Hello, hello. Say hello to everybody. Oh, can we get on your bed? Show, yeah, on your bed. Puppy, on your bed. Come on. Good girl. Good girl, yes, it's a nice. There you go. Just lie down for me. Can you just lie down? So there you go. Our pop loves it. Um, it's quite easy to manage. Thank you. Come on out of the way now. Come on, over here. Oh, over here. No, not on my. F oh my god. What? Right, okay, I'll rub your belly. So, um, this is just a plasterboard wall. So it's quite easy to um, to build. On the inside of the cupboard, I did have to remove um, a little brick wall that was here. And then where you can see that another brick wall at the back there, uh, there was a slab style shelf. Come out of the way, Pop. Um, so all that had to come out first. And then I was just able to mark up where the entrance was going to be and then cut this out with a reciprocating saw just straight through the two uh, plasterboard surfaces so there's this one and obviously the one on the inside there was a stud just here coming down obviously the reciprocating saw made uh, light work of that uh, I chose not to go below the skirting board so there's a little step um, but there's a mattress there anyway for her so that just went behind there so I decided to keep that in all this has got to get obviously decorated so ignore the fact that it's a mess it's a um, year's worth of corgi cars being raced up and down the hallway have made a mess of the skirting and this is just a piece of plywood cut out to shape and then rounded over on the edges with a trimmer router and all the, the inside section where it was hollow I've filled that in with some um, bit more stud work that I've been able to place through the gap and then screw around from both sides. So yeah, Poppy's quite happy with that. They've wanted to do that for a while because it's hard to find spaces for the dog's bed sometimes. We've had it down there before but now we'd like to utilise that corner for, uh, for coats um, and it just Everything always seemed to be in the way, so quite happy with progress so far. Okay, so uh, I've jumped ahead a little bit in time. Um, obviously, there was a little bit of a wait over Christmas and with COVID and everything. Um, unfortunately, I had to wait a couple of months for the plastering to get done. But um, it's nearly finished. At least the ceiling's done. So what you'll see is that I've just... Where the lights are going to be I've actually just completely boarded over so I had a couple of days where I didn't have any lights and then I've got my fire alarm wire just poking through ready for that to be rewired 
The reason why I've just completely boarded over and not left the wires hanging out or left the holes already there because it's just easier for the plasterer to just come straight over the entire ceiling in one go. Um, and then we just re-measure where the spotlights, where you've prepared all the wiring above. Uh, and when I boarded, I just made sure that there was a wider hole already cut out of the existing ceiling. So then when I've overboarded, I've made sure that I know where the, uh, where the spotlights are going to be. Put plenty of support, screws-wise, around that area, as well as on the rest of the board. And then um, just remark it now and come back with a adequate sized hole cutter like here I originally messed up on the measuring but um, that's why we measure twice cut once so I've me measured again and now you've got an absolutely perfect hole if I just reach up there now um, I would get the uh, the wire for the spotlight the other reason why it's such a good idea to completely overboard is if there was a small hole there where the um, where it's going to go then the sensor part of the drill I don't know whether the light's good enough now but where the drill actually comes through and you, um, for the arbor if that was a hole then this wouldn't have anything to actually screw through or to drill through because it would and you'll find that the arbor would move around and it would make a really scruffy um, mess of the hole so what I tend to do is I've got that drill bit ready where I can't see very much of the drill at the tip so to make sure that I've got the hole in the right place just using like a, a brad or in this case a narrow screwdriver I'll make a small pilot hole so that the end of the drill bit fits into there There you go, very nice and easy to cut. Just one single piece of uh, nine and a half mil plasterboard to cut out, which is no bother. So this is just this particular type of uh, a spotlight, of course, but they pretty much all work similar ways, I believe. These are mains powered. Um, they don't have to go on a, a separate transformer as I said before as long as they're RCD protected so I don't know how I'm going to do this with one end but this is where yeah, the cabling labels come into their own so so this one here on the left is the in and the one on the right is the out so I'll just separate insulation tape as you look at the light it's always in and out left and right so it's going to go in this way So these little points here, you just have to push them in and that opens up the, uh, the connection and that's it, For, you just have to make sure that there's no exposed wire. Once they're in, we've got these covers that then go over and they just slot in and hold the wires in place and cover up the actual terminals that's it they're all the way home got a little wago connector there for the uh, for the earth wires and they can just push up into the ceiling 
and then just for now until we do the decorating the spotlight's just going to sit there i'm just leaving the springs out um, and if you don't know how to fit the how, how the spotlights fit these springs push all the way up and they go into the hole first and then expand outwards once they're in so then they just hold the spotlight flush against the ceiling and there's a little rubber seal there for these which are ip65 water rated and uh, they just stop any water penetrating through into the where the light connect uh, electric terminals are right so i know i'm bad for this but uh, i've skipped on a bit right i've pretty much skipped the entire painting section um, i've said this before in my other videos painting is painting i'd never video um, any of my painting because <clears throat> it is what it is um, if anyone wants me to do a video about painting then i've got i'll you know i've got jobs coming up um in my daughter's room that i could show you so certainly with things like cutting in there's a bit of a skill to it you know um so i could always uh do something on that if you want but let's show you what the result was after all the plastering got finished up the hall up the landing um sorry and the stairs which came back sealed the plaster and then um, hit it with this blue which i was a bit concerned about because it was dark but actually the way that the spotlights hit it and because we went for a sort of I think it's a silk or, or vinyl finish, I can't remember now. Um, but it, it sort of really reflects the light quite well. And where it hits, the, the light hits the walls there, it makes it a lot lighter than what it actually is. Um, you can actually, you can see the difference there, if I zoom in a bit. But um, I love the colour in the end. I went for the white uh, around the, the sort of inside of the door openings repainted um cleaned off all the radiator and resprayed all of that um the white with the blue is nice is quite a nice contrast and it's uh, obviously lightened the room enough the the ceiling has, has done a great job of doing that as well and also the light bulbs um the the actual spotlights there the light what is it the cool white light or something like that rather than warm light so that makes a very big difference as well. Um, I've ended up going and replacing most of the other rooms now with uh, this cool light uh, light bulbs. Um, makes a massive difference. So something that I've not really gone into a lot on um, YouTube, but uh, you know something that I've occasionally comes out is a bit of an artistic sort of flair, and uh, I've done a Banksy there which is not a, a stencil that's hand painted um, and then basically the idea was that this balloon would then be drawing your eye up the stairs and um, the photos of other kids have been put in line with that with the little accompanying, uh, accompanying slogan of there is always hope uh, which is part of the, the painting uh, Jack actually said when he came back and saw it for the first time, he said, oh, there is always hope. Well, he says, I'm telling you now, she ain't getting that balloon back. <laughs> it makes me chuckle. Uh, it's a very typical thing for uh, for Jack to say. Um, before we move around any further, I've got a little shoe cupboard that I've built uh, out of pl um, plywood that was given to me by one of my neighbours. He had a job that he had done and uh, he had quite a bit left over um, enough to do all of this project including the doors which originally I didn't want doors and it was just um, a bench top with a couple of shelves to put the shoes in or on. Unfortunately the dog came in and got involved and started picking the shoes up and taking them away to chew them and then so I built the doors and then, would you know it, one of the kids has leaned on it and bloody broke the door, so something else I've got to uh, address. But that's nice. I've still got the old shoe cupboard, um, which has now just got bits and bobs for the dog and a couple of bits of more shoes in it. Um, give that a little bit of a spruce up, but I'm not too concerned about that. So we've got all the shoes, we've got somewhere to put them on uh, comfortably. 
managed to reuse the old coat rack but just cut it in half and just um, made it more for uh, well it's supposed to be more for guests but again my coat seems to be overtaking everything right um, another project that I've never done before um, the glass banister this was um, I paid through the nose for this actually and I've learnt a lot from uh, from doing this first project but it came out so nice that one of my neighbours got the, uh, got me to do theirs for them as well um, I learnt from this project actually that these brackets are positioned the screw holes which is right in the middle of the bracket there down into the stair stringer and up into the handrail at the top um, I positioned the screws and, and that, so that they were perfectly plumb but never took into account the fact that one was pointing this way and then this was pointing this way and so actually when you look at it now I don't know whether you can tell on this um, on this angle or from this camera but they look like they're out of line when they're not and so what I've done when I've done it the second time round is I've just positioned these slightly differently so that the width of the bracket and the width of the bracket are in line and that's that's worked a lot a lot better um, these were about I don't know 20 quid or something for a pack of 12 and um, they've got a little rubber shoe that fits either side of the the um, the glass and I, th I think they're just called glass clamps and got them from Amazon if you can see on this side then there's just two little screws that screw together and grip it from each side the glass itself I got made um, bespoke um, all you have to do is just get a piece of plywood and cut it to the exact shape and size that you want I actually bought uh, the 9 mil this is 8 mil glass but I bought 9 mil ply because it would fit inside the brackets so I put all the brackets on fitted the piece of ply found that it was all the right angles and everything like that and I rounded all the corners off um, knew that it fitted two fitted here and then obviously I've got the other one there at the top of the stairs um, and then obviously the one at the top of the stairs because it's just rectangular you can just give them the dimensions whereas this was one template done twice um, very well I want to say very simple job and it was a little bit fiddly um, with the making of the template but once you've got that fitting it was um, a doddle um, I think you'll agree as well it looks really nice it sort of goes with the sort of modern more modern look than what we had before uh, Poppy's bed continues to be a success she still really likes it looks a lot better as well now that it's been decorated um, what I've found um, is that she started chewing her old bed up and we replaced it and we've had this problem with her a few times and we bought something with like this faux fur and she's not touched it uh, as in chewing at all so anyone that's having any problems with uh, dogs chewing their beds up and whatever it might be an idea to give that a try she um, as I said it's 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 lasted months and months now um, to identify her I've done a little picture of some poppies to the side of the door instead of just putting her name on, on it I thought that was quite nice and it allowed me to just do another little touch of red a little splodge of red which uh, makes it stand out quite nicely I'll just shift my finger out of the way for you there and as we go up the stairs then I've got pictures of the kids I've got a little bit more of a Banksy theme going on because I did this job during Covid We've got the uh, the Banksy COVID picture. That's just um, a canvas that we've ordered. Got the uh, beloved Villa shirt signed by my team. And then the last thing that we've uh, added was quite a funky light. I don't know why, but this light's got sort of this feature where as you switch it on and off, um, it comes on in three different um, brightness levels so but you can't really choose which one you're picking at any one time 
you just have to toggle through so if you want it at the lowest setting then you have to flick it on and then off and on it comes on brighter and then it goes down and down and then bright again I don't know it's a great light it looks nice but I, I don't quite get that I suppose it's if you can have it on for a long time you could have it on dimmer save a bit of energy but I don't think that's going to save the planet on its own is it so um, as I said sorry I didn't do more of the filming of the um, the painting but I thought a lot of this job was about the prep work so may, hopefully you found the, the lights uh, and interesting I'm not an electrician I'm not an expert on it so you know if you did find fault with what I said just go easy will you you know I'm only a DIYer I know that it's safe I've checked it out with other people prior uh, and I know that I can do it um, in a safe manner um, so I've got some big projects coming up I'm um, going to do an announcement soon for for one uh, especially um, but there's going to be a lot of other little jobs that I'll go through during the year so if you are interested in seeing what they are and how they turn out and if you like this one please hit the like button um, if you want to see what's coming out soon then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button and that'll tell you when I release our next video um, thanks for watching take care of yourselves and hopefully I'll see you soon bye